Hey there, YouTube. It's me, Broken Terrain, and today I'm going to take a Renaissance Fair souvenir and turn it into an amazing piece of terrain right after the drop. Okay, we got this metal flower from the Michigan Renaissance Festival one year. I believe we paid five or ten dollars for it um and you know you want a souvenir i'm not quite sure what we intended to do with it and it has sat on my computer desk for uh several years now and i picked it up recently and went i think i could do a craft with this and uh here we go <laughs> I started with some rough sketches. I wanted to do a circular podium or shrine. I thought the, uh, the metal flower could be an artifact of some sort. And I thought some stairs maybe winding around the, uh, the circular podium going up would be very cool. Very playable. I wanted to uh, have function on the table. Um, so I cut out an 8-inch circle, two 6-inch circles, two 4-inch circles. And the idea was that it would, that the 8 would be the base and that it would wind up two 6-inch circles, uh, one inch going around the, uh, the edge, and then it would continue to go up from the four inch circles. I end up modifying the design a little bit and um, I'll explain as we go. But uh, my first step is to find the middle, trace uh, a line to the outside for a step, and then from the inside of that step, from the inside circle, I measure an inch. Because again, I want this to be very playable. I want pieces to be able to fit on these uh, spaces or stairs. And then I uh, mark out, this is a half inch piece of XPS foam, and I roughly mark out a third or, or thirds on the edge. And th this gets my stairs for me. Uh, so I end up with a cutout piece that's, um, that will start as the bottom step. And then the next step I cut down to a third, the next step a, um, two thirds, and then finally uh, the last step uh, reaches the top of this XPS foam layer. This here is the second six inch circle. I'm cutting off all the uh, steps from the bottom layer and starting with the very next step going up. Uh, the math ends up working out very well for me on this project and the two steps meet up directly in the back. Here you can see I've got the 8 inch base and I carved a step out of that going up. It goes all the way around the two 6 inch pieces up to a fourth inch piece and then this top fourth inch piece um, I do a, a double stairway going to the top and I end up scrapping it for a platform um, I know you're thinking well that looks really good and it works out really well why would you scrap that well here's why I'll show you I ordered uh, some LEDs and batteries off of Amazon and I got it in my crazy head to try some out. So up until this point I've been doing my lighting with dollar store tea lights and um, dollar store strings but there is a much easier and even lower profile way of handling lighting and that is with one single LED and one single button battery. Let me show you. The smaller end is the positive. Put that on the positive end. The longer the negative and it lights right up. This is it. 
This is all you need to do. And I decided green for this project. Metal flower, green. Um, I thought it could be something for um, nature even though the metal flower doesn't make sense. And so a, a story began to brew in my mind about what this artifact was. But we'll get to that later. Um, in order to make the battery and LED work, you need to cut a slit where the battery can go in and out. And you see I've uh, got some little finger grooves there so I can pinch the battery um, as I use it and and uh, don't use it and then I finish the cut in the next layer of foam and this is it this is as far as it gets mechanically you put the light in and the light uh, just slips right over the battery that's it look at that could you do that with a tea light yes you could bury a tea light in there cut a hole for the switch totally doable uh, this was my first time doing just the LED and battery it's very easy it's very cool and I see myself adding lights <laughs> completely unnecessary lights to a lot of projects so uh, look for that in the future I hot glue the LED down I bend the the prongs back hot glue them into place that way they don't uh, fall out or the the light move without me wanting it to carefully glue that layer to the bottom layer exactly where I have it all sketched out and then we're done slip that battery in and it lights up I'll um, add a plus and minus just so I know for the future and uh, LED success <laughs> fantastic I take this uh, other layer of course I have to cut the center out of it and then I want this is where I've decided I want to do this light up platform with these magic runes so I cut a bevel out so that I can get lots of area on the platform to light up does that make sense you'll see hopefully it makes sense I'm gonna take a little uh, cereal box cardboard fruity pebbles if you're wondering and cut a circle out I've got the line sketched out where my center is where the outside is I do one more guiding ring around and then I'm just gonna draw out Lots of random runic type slashes and designs, and then I'm going to cut them out. Why I'm cutting these out? Why don't you uh, smash that like button? That would really help me out. Maybe share the video with family and friends. If you want more of this stuff, please subscribe. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right, it was a fair amount of, of uh, work, but what do you think? Was it worth it? Hell yes, it was worth it. So now I have the center, and of course I can't leave it there. I need more light up. Oh man, I saw the runes on the platform, so I'm like, this flower is really tall. I really don't want to cut it, although I probably should have. So I want... I want this pedestal, which has to be massive if I don't want to cut the the souvenir. I want it to be just as cool as that runic floor. So I do a column with the same effect and uh, cut the middle of our runic cent uh, disc out. And this way the light goes all the way up. It uh, hits the disc and then it hits this column and I'm gonna shut the lights down oh my god oh oh man did you see that of course we gotta do a top and I thought metal flower so I did kind of a leaf motif 
and I want it to look like it's floating in the center of the light. So I'm going to grab a uh, piece of packing plastic, cut a circle out, scuff it up with my brass brush, and then I'm going to glue it uh, right to the cardstock top. To get as much light as possible into this fairly large cavity I've created, I'm going to glue down some tin foil. This is going to help reflect the light and just make it as bright as possible through these rooms. If I had been thinking right, I would have coated my cardstock with the tin foil as well, and then the whole thing is just reflecting everywhere. Uh, but I didn't think ahead, so instead, I went in and I painted uh, the Fruity Pebbles box white and this was a real important step because you could really see the bright pinks and yellows, the, the very bright box uh, came through those runes. So that white was necessary and I believe it helps with the lighting. Um, I cut a hole, fit the rose in, attached that bottom piece to stabilize and keep the rows dead center of the column. Then I'm gonna dress the column up with some XPS foam stonework. And don't forget tin foil for texture. If you can, the more delicate pieces, try to texture those uh, before you lay them down. Uh, it gets way more difficult when the piece is put together completely. I wish I had tin foiled these lower sections before I glued them together. I have a hard time getting my tin foil ball into some of the corners and crevices, but eh, what are you gonna do? Oh, I know. Flock with glue and sand. That's what you're gonna do. On to hand drawn brick. Why? because I'm addicted to it right now. I frickin' love drawing out brick. It's so effective, I find it very fun to do. It's one of those put your head down and just progress type things. Um, I'll play some music, watch a video while I craft, and before I know it, the whole darn thing is all bricked up. And then I wanted to do some columns around this shrine. I thought it would um, help elevate its look. And because the rose sits so high, I thought some columns could um, reach up there, uh, if not as tall, close to as tall as the rose itself. And then the height of the metal flower wouldn't look so strange. I do six inch four and a half inch and three inch columns, two of each. And then they go from largest down to the smallest back to front. And it creates this really cool look, this really cool profile. Cut your uh, cardboard to size, find a form to round it around. I um, tore a thin piece of chip, glued it on the inside of one side. And then while holding it down, glued it on the other, and then capped each end with a cylinder of foam hot glued around the edges just to make sure those uh, columns stay together. And then waste not, want not, I took some of the two inch circles that I had cut out uh, to make room for the lighting and I used those as toppers for my columns. Here you can see uh, while I'm hot gluing you can see the the foam core uh, plugs that I put in either end. And this is really going to help glue it down to the base as well. Here we are. I was really worried about finally gluing it down. I didn't want to forget to do anything. And so I was really concerned. But at some point, you just got to do it. So I glued the, uh, the major part down. I glued the top part down and then I went in and glued each column. It worked out really well. Everything is spaced really well. This project just came together like a snap. It was really what I needed after that 
disappointing uh, mill base. After I bomb the whole thing with the uh, half a black acrylic, half matte Mod Podge, I went back in with an elephant gray and hit everything. And then, like the hand done brick, I'm very into painting out individual stones right now. So I use my cinnamon, my khaki, my burnt umber, and later on I'm going to be like, more color please. So I go back in and I grab my flamenco red. And I'm going to add that color to the bricks as well. Here's where I'm like, okay, everything's going great without a hitch. <laughs> How can I try and mess this up? <laughs> So I decide I'm going to hit all the rest of the stone with a blue and kind of cool the stone down. I don't know. Despite my best effort, it works. It works really well. And uh, with the black wash, my homemade black wash, uh, the colored stone mutes a little bit. It uh, blends in. The blue just adds a nice layer to the rest of the shrine it all works i don't know the crafting gods were smiling upon me this thing turns out great everything works even though i'm trying weird stuff it all just comes together uh kismet i believe is what they call that i love it i love this piece and uh once the wash dries up it's time to uh hit it with a dry brush and I'm just pumped because I know it's gonna look amazing <laughs> granite gray dry brush the whole darn thing uh, hit the columns and the uh, the larger uh, gray stone parts of it hit that uh, middle platform hit the runes uh, I don't hit the uh, I hit the edges of the steps but I really like the color the way it is just smash those columns with a little dry brush. Then I glue and flock with some turf. And I decide to hot glue some moss vines going up uh, some of the columns. Just to really sell that deep woods uh, forest shrine. Man, I love this project. It turned out so good. I hope you try something like it. Never uh, never miss an opportunity for a little inspiration. The Renaissance Festival is a great time. It's fun to go to. And maybe you'll find a little something that'll look really cool with your craft. Anyway, thanks for watching. And I'm going to let Tinley talk about uh, the shrine and its history. Thanks for watching, everybody. Where am I? I'm lost. You have been cursed. The spirits healed your body, but could not remove it. I am here to help you. The shaman materializes from nowhere. Oh yes, I see you. You try now. Tinley materializes from the void. That was easy. I just did as you did, Zella. Wait. Zella? That is your name. How do I know that? I have spirit linked with you. It merges our minds, our memories together so we can fight this curse. How do we do that? I do not know. Well, you're not much help. In a matter of moments, I have helped you regain your sense of self. No, you're right. I'm sorry, Zella. It is forgiven. Now, we must concentrate. While Zella helped Tinley within her own mind to heal the curse, Natasia entered the hut. Ugh, everybody glows like a firework around here. Ridiculous. Oh, is that the gem I spot? Wonderful! <laughs> the demoness works her way around to the table. 
grabs the gem and places it in her pocket. Look at her lying there, defenseless. <laughs> it would be so easy for me to kill her. The demoness approaches, pulls her stiletto, waves it back and forth. Mm, I should kill you for all the trouble you've caused me. But I have what I need. I'll let father take care of you. <laughs> Using her shadow magic, she blends into the shadows within the room and teleports out. Yes, concentrate. You have been there before. Yes, I think I think see Carter. it. <gasps> oh my. This is a holy place. There is much love here. I remember this place. My mother brought me here when I was a little girl. The Metal Flower Shrine. And as Tinley recalled the story from her childhood, she and Zella walked ever closer to the shrine, drawn to the mysterious Metal Flower. Boros put all his love into this metal flower to win Freya back. Oh, what a beautiful story. This artifact must contain huge amounts of magic. Try it, Tin Li. Step forward and touch the shrine. And as Tin Li outstretches her hand and touches the magic shrine, a shadow oozes from her being off into the air and dissipates. The metal flower has cured you. Now I can take you back to your friends. Oh, do not worry. No harm has come to them. I'll kill you, Die, you green bastard! Thanks for watching, everybody. As always, like each other, love each other, and craft on!